Welcome to St. John the Evangelist, the oldest and most vibrant Catholic community in Baltimore County, Maryland. On behalf of Father Pete Littero, our pastor, and the entire parish staff, we want you to know that you are welcome, loved, and prayed for.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to St. John's as we all come together to celebrate the baptism of our Lord. Our celebrant for this morning's liturgy is Father Conklin. Our opening hymn can be found in the Gather Hymnal, the Blue Hymnal, on page 30, or excuse me, 350. 350. Um, again, 350. And our opening hymn is Come to the Feast. And in unity of all our brothers and sisters in Christ, we ask that you please stand and join as we sing number 350, Come to the Feast. Everyone who labors, come to the waters. All you who have no money, come to the feast. For this is life, the waters of the Jordan. For this is life, the waters of your birth. For this is life, the waters that renew you. Oh, come to the feast. Oh, come, come to the feast. Oh, everyone who seeks, come to the water. Hear me and share the riches, come to the feast. And everyone who mourns, come to the water. Now is an end to sadness, come to the feast. For this is life, the streams of joy and gladness. For this is life. The rain that brings you joy, for this is life. The water that restores you, oh, come to the feast. Oh, come to the feast. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. On this feast of the Lord's baptism, we celebrate the gift of God in Jesus. His Spirit anoints us to follow Him and to do His will. As we recall how the Holy Spirit was given to each of us at our baptism to make us disciples of Christ, we give thanks for God's grace at work in our lives to bring us to salvation. For the times we have neglected to live up to our baptismal calling, let us be reminded of our need for God's grace as we ask forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you are our Messiah and Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the beloved Son of the Most High. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are anointed with the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to be. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand, of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. Spirit in 
mighty ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved son, grant that your children by adoption, who are born of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Will the children come forward who would like to participate in the children's liturgy of the word? send you forth to listen to God's word and hear about Jesus being baptized and we're anxious to await your return. May God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out. In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by a strong arm. He is, here is his reward with him his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Our responsorial psalm can be found in the blue hymnal, the gather hymnal on page 38. Again, this is page 38. It is taken from Psalm 29. Our response will be, the Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord will bless his Oh, give the Lord, you children of God, give the Lord glory and power, give the Lord the glory of his name, adore the Lord, resplendent and holy. The Lord's voice resounding on the waters, the Lord on the immensity of waters, the voice of the Lord full of power, the voice of the Lord full of splendor.
the God of glory thunders. In his temple they all cry, glory. The Lord sat enthroned over the blood. The Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. When the kindness and generous love of God, our Savior, appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. After all the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you for coming out on this lovely winter morning. Today marks a turning point in the liturgical season of the church. It's the end of the Christmas season and the beginning of ordinary time. The gospel reading we hear today immediately is immediately followed by a sentence that begins when Jesus began his ministry. The readings of ordinary time convey to us 
the ministry of Jesus. To recap our liturgical year so far, we have gone through Advent, where we prepare ourselves in a special way for two comings of Christ. When he comes again at the end of time, and when he came to us 2,000 years ago to assume our human nature. Throughout the year, we should always be preparing for Christ to come to us in the present. The Christmas season is a celebration of the mercy of God the Father and the kindness and generous love of, our, of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy. The incarnation of the Son of God is an act of mercy. The infant in the manger comes to free us from our sins, to remove the separation between us and God. Ordinary time teaches us the path we need to take to move away from sin and towards the Father, and also how to be merciful to each other. We have two periods of ordinary time during the liturgical year, the period we are entering now, and then the period after the Easter season, which will last through it to until Advent. The baptism of the Lord is the third epiphany of the Christmas season. The first epiphany is at Christmas when the Son of God becomes incarnate to bring the good news to the poor, the outcast, and the sinner. Last weekend, we celebrated the second epiphany of the season with the visit of the Magi, where we come to realize that Jesus comes for everyone. For this third epiphany we hear, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. Jesus fulfills the first part of our first reading. He gives comfort to God's people. He speaks tenderly to Jerusalem. Through the cross, he declares their guilt expiated. But what is the meaning of the baptism of Jesus, since he is without sin? There are several possible interpretations. Given its location in the gospel, the baptism of Jesus is his commissioning by the Father to begin his public ministry. The Holy Spirit descends upon Jesus while he is praying before the voice of, from heaven proclaims, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. As I mentioned before, what immediately follows is when Jesus began his ministry. Because Jesus is the Son of God in the flesh, he is showing us solidarity with us. The people being baptized by John are self-proclaimed sinners. John preaches a baptism of repentance. Jesus does not need this baptism because he is without sin. By participating in this baptism, he is showing his closeness to us his desire to be with us, even though we are sinners. In fact, it is because we are sinners that he wants to be close to us. As we hear in the second reading, he gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The third interpretation comes from Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI in his book, Jesus of Nazareth. It is a variant of what I just stated. Jesus is stepping into the place of all sinners, which reaches its full meaning with the cross and resurrection. Jesus begins his public ministry by assuming our place before the Father. Given these three interpretations for the baptism of Jesus, we can reflect on the meaning of our baptism. First, baptism frees us from all sin. It also enables us to resist sin. Jesus frees us from sin only if we take ownership of the sins we have committed and commit and recognize that Jesus forgives us for each of these specific sins each and every one, and that he desires for us to sin no more. Second, our baptisms incorporate us into the body of Christ. We should be in solidarity with each other because we are all one body. Bishop Robert Barron says the church is a living organism. 
because it is the body of Christ. How would different would the church be if this was always in the forefront of our awareness, that we, that we are a part of the one body of Christ? If we did not have a view of the church as an institution, how would things be different if we view ourselves as part of the same organism? All the components of an organism have to work together or the organism is sick. When a body fights against itself, it is sick. The sickness must be healed in order to function properly. Third, our baptism sends us forth to proclaim the good news. We are called to fulfill the second half of our first reading. We are to prepare the way for the Lord. Each one of us is called to do this. We are not called to do it in the same way, but each one of us is called. Do we live our lives with this awareness? As we reflect on the baptism of the Lord this day, may we respond generously to the responsibility of our own baptism, for we too have been immersed in water and received the Holy Spirit. We are the body of Christ. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our, our sake, sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In prayer, let us call on God who draws us near to Christ, on whom God's Spirit rests, as we respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the Catholic Church, that they may be passionate about transforming the world by faith and change it through an example of love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government officials and influential citizens, may God cleanse them of any spirit of partisanship, selfishness, unfairness, or anything which turns them from the direction of God we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. John the Evangelist parishioners, may all members refresh and renew their relationship with God as at baptism and seek new ways to be intentional in developing a deeper relationship with Jesus our Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have not been baptized who have never heard of the name of Jesus or the kindness and generous love of the Father. May we be disciples and bring the good news to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For all those 
who've asked for our prayers, especially those who are suffering from COVID-19 or other ailments, those listed in our parish list of intentions and for the prayers we hold in our hearts. May the healing presence of Jesus remove the darkness of any suffering and pain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Jean Harmon and faithful members of St. John Parish community, may they now have the joy and peace of the kingdom of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Jim Schmidt Sr., for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us now pray our bicentennial prayer. The prayer can be found in your pew. Son of God, we are, we are so grateful, grateful for you. You, you have, have sent, sent your spirit upon this community of St. John the Evangelist to accompany, accompany one, one another in encountering, in encountering your love and peace for 200 years. Jesus, we turn to you and look for your guidance so that we may work together as a community to support the mission of St. John the Evangelist, Long Green Valley, to love God, love others, proclaim the good news, and make disciples for at least 200 more years. Ever faithful are your works, O Lord. We are truly blessed and encouraged to continue to serve you and your people. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We have two collections this weekend. Our second collection, which will be taken up after communion, is for the special care for retired clergy. And as we bring our gifts forward for preparation, please join in singing our offertory hymn found in the Choose Christ Missal. Number 204, again, 204, open my eyes.
pray, brothers, that my sacrifice and yours is acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the Spirit descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. indeed holy o lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John and with all the saints on whose intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other this sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the internet, you can join us now in communion by making an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, My Jesus I believe, I believe that, that you are, you are in present in the most holy sacrament. I love, I love you above all things, things and, I and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this, at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here and unite myself wholly to you. Never, Never permit, permit me to be separated from, from you. Amen. Amen. As you come forward to the table of the Lord to receive the blessed sacrament, join in singing our communion hymn found in the blue hymnal. The Gather Hymnal, page 585, again 585, Let Us Be Bread. <laughs>
February 12th is our Valentine's social. So join us for a special evening of good food and beverages, dancing, and the company of all your special someone. Bicentennial book, there's still time for you and your family to be memorialized in this special book, which will highlight our year-long celebration. Anniversary blessings after the 9 a.m. Mass this next weekend. Please call the office if you wish to receive a blessing for your anniversary. Next Sunday, we will begin the quiet Mass at 7.30. This means the Mass will have no music. The poor box collection this weekend will go to the victims of the tornado in Kentucky. Our Christmas flowers are looking good for home. Please feel free to take some from the narthex, not from the sanctuary as you leave today. There is no LG's Cafe after this, today's Mass or any of the 9 a.m. Masses throughout January. Please take with you a copy of our Sunday Bulletin and check our parish website to learn more information about the activities, ministries, and spiritual offerings taking place at our parish in our celebration of our bicentennial year. And we thank you for your support of the ministries and operation of St. John the Evangelist Church through your weekly offerings via online or envelope. Your volunteering and weekly donations enable us to continue providing good worship experiences, live streaming, and pastoral care programs. Please stand. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may by your children in name and truth, through Christ, our, we may be your children in name and truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the Christmas, ra Christmas raffle drawing. Can't you feel the excitement in the air? <laughs> this is our second annual Christmas cash raffle drawing held today immediately after our 9 a.m. Mass. I'd like to thank all our parishioners and benefactors for once again your generosity in uh, not only this fundraiser but all the fundraisers we have throughout the season, not just your, your funds, your talents, your treasures. Uh, it's all so much appreciated and recognized. Um, a special thank you to the Spring Fling Committee and Pastoral Council for, for chairing this fundraiser, especially uh, Mr. Todd DePew, who couldn't be with us here this morning, but believe me, he had a great deal to do with this, and we thank him very, very much. I hope he's watching on live stream right now. Um, also, in addition, certainly uh, Barbara Hickman, uh, Cindy Martino, and Gail Bailey, who helped us throughout in uh, auditing the raffle ticket money as it came in each week. Uh, in addition, a very huge thank you to Mark McFall, who is a parishioner, a very loyal parishioner. Uh, he is an entrepreneur, and he sponsored the printing of all the tickets so there was no cost to the parish. Uh, please support his businesses, uh, which you can find on the back of your stub. Uh, now, for the event, Father Conklin, we'd like to select three children from the parish here in the congregation one at a time and each one will, one will come up at a time and pick the first ticket okay and then um, uh, that ticket will go back into the basket after it's announced because you get three chances to win so theoretically somebody here right now could win six thousand dollars okay so let's get a volunteer okay This is for third place, $1,000. Ticket number 2825, Melissa Nolan. 
Congratulations to Melissa, a thousand dollar winner. Take a picture of it too. Okay. Now this we need another uh, young child uh, parishioner volunteer to uh, uh, Father Pete, Father Tasha. The girl back here. down deep, dig down deep. Ticket number 1920, Marty Capel. Okay, ticket number 1920, that's a, a $2,000 winner. Now the grand prize for $3,000. Father Conklin, please select the, the child from the audience. Ticket 130, David Barber. stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May only God bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So I'm announced the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And as we continue in our mission to go make disciples, we stand proudly as we sing our hymn, which can be found in the blue hymnal, the gather hymnal number 572, 572, blessed in water, but bap, excuse me, baptized in water. Baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, dead in the tomb with Christ our King, one with his rising, freed and forgiven, thankfully now God's praise we sing. Baptized in 